So we have Ria here on your screen and uh, you can see on the 28th of July, she scored a 750, although not very happy with her score. We'll ask her why. And she wants to probably re-attempt and so on. And um, I really feel that a score like this is sufficient because her score in quant is pretty sufficient. Still, we'll see. So I'm stopping the share, Ria. Please start your camera and let's get started. I can hear you. Hi. Oh, hi. Hi. Hi, Ria. So, uh, your voice is a bit choppy. Can you just check your mic? Because uh, sometimes it's heard, sometimes it's not. It looks like that. So, just can you just check them? Um, is this better? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, okay. Ria, first of all, uh, let us know exactly what worked. It's a good score, by the way. You seem a bit disappointed. What happened? So, uh, I mean, of course, I'm happy with the score. Um, it's just that uh, I felt like I had, I mean, through the mocks that I was doing uh, throughout mm -hmm. my step journey, and especially the mocks that I did right before the exam, I felt like I had done slightly better. So mm -hmm. I scored either a 760 or 770 in at least my last four mocks or so. So, um, although I do recognize that, you know, there are factors in the exact center mm -hmm. situation which are out of your hand and it's completely possible that, you know, you don't, you score within a range of plus minus 20. Mm -hmm. But keeping that in mind as well, I just felt like taking another attempt might be a good option just because I felt like, uh, so, I mean, I have some time on my hand and committing it to getting a better score or maybe even increasing my chances of getting a B school of my choice might help absolutely fabulous yes yes and you feel you lost out more in verbal probably obviously because quant could be 50 50 when it's not generally in your hands so is it verbal yeah. that you want to bump up probably this time right so um so when i went through my detailed report for my score mm -hmm. report so i i mean uh as expected i lost most of my uh most questions that i attempted incorrectly were in sentence correction <laughs> So um, I think just working on sentence correction is something I'd like to do, especially because uh, a lot of times it can feel so subjective. But if you just go through the rules, if you just work on them further, you realize that, you know, um, there are some things that there are some rules that you can simply learn and it becomes a lot more objective. So, yeah. so I think just, you know, brushing up those concepts and just going over them again to see if there's any scope for increasing my score. And of course, since I have a 750 now and I'm not, I am happy with that score. I'm not very worried about, um, even if my score is not as good in the next attempt, I'd like to take the attempt just to, you know, just see if there's any scope of improvement. Absolutely fabulous to know. So just take me through your prep journey. What all did you study? What were your weak area, strong area? How much time you took? And um, right. overall, what was the exam experience? The whole thing chronologically, if you could take us through. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, absolutely. So I think I'll start by talking about a few of my weak areas and where I needed to work specifically. So starting mm -hmm. with the verbal section. So like I mentioned, I think sentence correction was a bit confusing to me initially. And that was just because I felt like, uh, like you know, uh, especially when there was a 3-2 split, I used to feel like, you know, it was really subjective between those last two options. Sure, you could eliminate three options. But when it came to those last two options, there used to be a really tiny change or, you know, a really small edit between the two of them. And then you had to make a decision. So initially, I used to feel like that could be a little subjective. However, I think, you know, that's where the basics really come to use. So I felt like, you know, some really um, some really core rules that were uh, mentioned again and again in the classes, as well as the documents, the material that were, we were provided, for instance, subjunctives or absolute phrases. So stuff like that, I think that really helped me in realizing that it was not as subjective as I may think. And I think that really got confirmed Um. So I remember specifically there was this set of 100 most important um, sentence correction questions. And uh, I attempted those questions by writing in every question what was incorrect in each option that I eliminated. And I think that really helped me because it you know, really confirmed that there is a certain degree of objectivity when it comes to something like sentence correction as well. Because a lot of times the reason that I would written would be the same as mentioned in the material or the one that it's so I would discuss in class. So I think, you know, just realizing that um, it's not as subjective as we initially think it is. And it can, in fact, be really objective if you uh, make use of the rules and if you eliminate. 
So I think that was one realization that really helped with sentence correction. Um, other than that, as far as RC and CR was concerned, I feel like for RC, it was uh, just practicing that really helped me. So um, instead of, I mean, of course, I did, uh, I went through the material as well. But uh, I think what really helped me in RC and CR was taking sectional tests, just because I felt like, um, you know, um, I didn't think that the concepts were very hard. It was just that, you know, keeping time as well as, you know, putting yourself in that situation of test taking uh, would, you know, I would really get under, I would get really nervous and I wouldn't perform as well. And um, I would, I remember there would be a lot of situations where I couldn't, you know, um, where the rules or the concepts that I'd learned for CR and RC wouldn't come as automatically to me right. in test situations. So I think taking sectional tests really helped um, instead of just taking full length mocks. So of course, I took full length mocks towards the end of my, uh, closer to my GMAT. But I think more initially, I started taking sectional tests because I felt that, you know, that really helped me in realizing what it was that I needed to improve or, you know, work on within specific sections. So, that so essentially, you what you learned got cemented by writing so many tests in terms of concepts and practice, like the approach, essentially. Of course, right. And must have improved your pacing also, I guess, with that. Uh, yeah, I think my pacing was a much bigger issue for me in math. So mm -hmm. I think, uh, so I'm a math major. So concepts yeah. were not a very big issue for me in math. I think a lot of the concepts that were coming in the mm -hmm. GMAT were already familiar to me. Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest issue for me per se was timekeeping mm -hmm. and um, just realizing that, you know, there were some questions. Um, for instance, I remember there was a set of questions and in inequalities where you had to plug in numbers instead of you know, right. solving it algebraically. And I used to really get stuck in those questions because even the format used to be like, um, I don't know if the, those have already been covered, but the format would be like, is it one only? So three options would be given and is it the mm -hmm. options, the answer choices would be like, is it one only, one and two, one and three and right, so on. Right. So I used to get really uh, confused on this on those questions because I would never understand what kind of numbers to plug in or, you know, <laughs> whether I should plug in numbers into each of those inequalities and so on. So I think, you know, one of the biggest things that helped me in terms of a lot of those questions was just pacing myself and um, realizing that, you know, you can't, you can't get stuck on one question at the end of the day because it is a time test. So I think one really important learning that came as a result of taking sectional tests as well as mocks was to always have your eye on the clock. And this was especially true for me in the uh, Quan section because I felt like that was one place where I used to get really hell-bent on getting like stuck on one question if I couldn't solve it. So yeah, I because of your background as well, because it's it's more like, right. how can I not get this in this much time probably? Uh, I think more so, exactly. And I think more so, you know, just realizing that Maybe if I try a little harder, spend a little more time on it, I will get the answer. But I think at the end of the day, you need to realize that, you know, um, like mm -hmm. if if it's taking a lot of time, if it's taking, let's say, more than two, two and a half minutes, then you need to move on because right. you, should, you should try your best to solve it within those two and a half minutes. And I think, you know, uh, some concepts such as like realizing which questions require number to be plugged in and which questions require you to solve them otherwise, I think mm -hmm. that's something that uh, comes with practice and comes with doing a lot of questions. And I think it came to me by doing a lot of sectional tests. But, um, uh, you know, just that understanding that if it's not happening, you still need to move on and you need to select whatever you think is the best option. So I think that really helped me. Superb to know. And tell us your exam experience. Were you a bit nervous? Were you completely in your zone? And uh, which was the first section you did, second section? Was there anything unusual? Please just let right. us know everything one by one. Right. Sure. So um, I think, um, so I took my exam in the center. And the reason I decided to take it in the center was because a few of my friends had taken the exam at home. And um, they hadn't had the best experiences. For instance, one of them um, had their score canceled because there was some noise in the background or something of that sort. So I decided to take it at the center. Uh, honestly, uh, it, it, the experience was a little nerve-wracking at first just because um, 
nerve wracking at first just because I think um regardless of how many mocks you do you can never put yourself exactly in the situation as the one that would exist in the test center but right. I think you know, um it, it, you it of course you know there are things that'll help you in calming your nerves I mean um for instance in the test center I took there was a good amount of time before I was seated in the test so I had enough time to calm myself down and just you know get adjusted to that atmosphere so I think that was a good thing I think the only um not the only surprise maybe not a surprise but the only thing that I was uh that you know I was not aware of before I went to the test center and I was a little taken aback by was um the fact that you know um so at least in the optional breaks you get, you're supposed to time yourself and you are not in front of your computer. So you're supposed to time yourself on clocks on clocks that are outside the, um, you know, the region where the computers are in the test center. And I think though, um, the place where I, uh, where I, uh, like a little blunder I committed during my test taking, uh, during my exam was, um, that um, so there were two clocks in my test center and both of them were at different times. So oh. I saw my, starting time the break the starting time of my break on one clock and then I saw the I was monitoring my break on another clock so I think you know just this tiny thing even though I didn't miss a lot of my um so uh, I didn't miss a lot of my time for the next session even though it was like barely maybe like 30 seconds or one minute but I got so worked up because I was a little late in reaching my computer that I felt like initially in that section I was a little you know I I wasn't as section. Fun. This was the second section. So, but which one? Yes. So, so second I one or verbal section. Okay. Verbal. I did my verbal section first, and I did my quant section next. So oh, nice. this is the optional break between my verbal and my quant section. Got it. Got it. anything unusual, Ria, that you saw on the test? That uh, anything at all? That no, this is unfamiliar or unseen sort of a thing. Um. No, honestly, not at all. I think. Um. I think all of the concepts, all of the concepts that we've done in class, uh, those are the ones that came and there was nothing, there was no concept in the test that I was unfamiliar with or I did not, I had never heard of or I couldn't recognize the concept upon looking at the question. So mm -hmm. I don't really think that was a problem. Um, yeah, I would say that, you know, the material definitely covered every concept that came in my, my exam. And some of the things that you would say should and you know, people should do, shouldn't do, because I generally ask you on being on the other side. Now you can tell these are two or three things that everyone should do and a couple of things that everyone shouldn't do. So just would you be able to articulate those, please? Right. I think personally for me, uh, I think as I've mentioned extensively, one thing that really helped me and I would recommend that people uh, that, you know, anyone who is having an issue with timekeeping should do is... um take sectional tests. I think that's what really helped me in uh, just timing myself and um, just, you know, just making sure that I was pacing myself well. So that was one thing that I think people should do. And I think another thing that really helped me was sticking to the structure. So I took the self-paced course. So I think just sticking to the structure of the, um, of the, you know, the structure of the, the study lessons that were given to us. I think that really helped me because, um, Given how extensive the exam can be, I felt like um, I felt like you know at some point there was a possibility for me to be all over the place and not really understand what I should do. But I think that structure that you know the the study plan, the structure that it provided me with, it made sure that you know at no point was I lost in my preparation. Right. So, so I I I knew exactly what I had to do next. So I think that was really helpful. So I think sticking to the study plan is great. Um, I think um, some things that you um, sh maybe, you know, shouldn't do, I think. Um, so uh, one thing I unfortunately did was, you know, um, I kept delaying taking my DMAT for a really long time because I felt like, one, I think I was a little underconfident about my grasp over the, con over the concepts. And I was uh, taking this judgment very arbitrarily because it's not like I was testing myself and, you know, really seeing what my score would be like. So I kept telling myself that you're not ready. And I delayed taking my GMAT by a lot of time. I honestly, like in retrospect, I wish I had like, you know, taken mocks a little more regularly. And by that, I mean, like, you know, maybe once in like three weeks or so, just so that I know whether or not I've improved my performance at all. And I know that, you know, I've reached a certain benchmark. 
So I think um that is something that you know I think you know just postponing your GMAT and just delaying it unnecessarily without any having any reason to do it. I think that's something that uh, I did, and I don't think it was the best thing to do in that situation. So Ria, one last thing: if you hadn't done this, uh, let's say relax, prep, or postpone, then what is the ideal time one can finish this preparation in according to? Because you said you postponed it but let's right. say that is not there then what is the minimum and ideal time that you can right. finish this in so um so i postponed it for a while and then i realized that i really need to get to this so uh mm-hmm. how i did it was that i booked my gma date and then i worked backwards mm-hmm. so, um i booked it i think i booked it for a month and a half in mm-hmm. uh so i booked it in uh the second week of june for the last week of july mm-hmm. and, right uh, I think that was more than enough time, but that is also because I had a lot of time on my hands, so I could commit to the exam. I mm. think for people who can't commit as much time to the exam, even then, I think a period of you know two two and a half months is more than enough. Um, mm. even if you're starting from, uh, and I think you know if you're able to commit as much time as the program requires you to commit, which is I think around like three hours a day, I think right. that much amount of time is definitely sufficient. Superb, superb. And it seems you're not applying for round one now because you're improving your score. So are you going for 2025 admissions or something like that? Or you'll try round two? Uh, so I uh, so I just graduated from college. So, mm-hmm. I, so I don't see myself applying at least for the next um, three, four years. Uh, All right. We'll keep the score and then... Right, exactly. Superb. Do let us know and uh, keep us posted in case you're retaking it. Tell us uh, your updated score. And anytime you need help with the applications, do reach out. In the meanwhile, do finish the Know the World program completely. It will genuinely help in ways that you can't even imagine. Probably would not have done it fully right now, but do finish the videos. Right. See you then. All the very best and thanks for making time. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.